This is Matrix Lord 212, and I'm reviewing The Amazing Mary Jane, number two. Okay, so I have a lot to say about this issue. Um, it changes the dynamic of Spider-Man and Mysterio probably forever. Okay, because here's the thing. Um, Mary Jane is working with Mysterio to make a film about his life, and she is the lead. So basically, she is helping him in every way to do this film uh recently uh, they started they were filming and they started taking all the equipment away because he hasn't paid the bill and the person that was financially backing the budget of the film backed out because they felt they were lied to which they were so she has to step in and be the brains of the operation and basically go throughout hollywood with him to get a new budget, a new backer, a new financer, um, and he is losing control. Now, he has basically, he's posing as this big-time director who's technically on vacation, but the director is always known as calm and kind, uh, and he is being like a nut on set, basically flipping out and going to swing at people, and then it hits the paparazzi that he's been doing this, so people are concerned. Um, so while she is trying to help him get a budget, there's stuff going on behind the scenes of the lead actor that plays Mysterio. Uh, they, you know, they're finding out that the budget is gone and they want him out of there. His agent wants him out of there. So basically she helps um, Mysterio get the budget for the movie, but it's going to be an indie budget now. And they go to the set and they find out that the actor is leaving as Mysterio. So she suggests to Mysterio that he be Mysterio, because nobody else could be Mysterio but Mysterio. Um, and just as they're about to film, um, and they make compromises, because now the actor, they don't have to pay, um, now the uh, Vulture attacks with the Savage Six. Uh, you know, so that's going to be a big thing. Now, the reason why this changes the dynamic is because they becoming deep, deep friends, like good friends. So imagine, like... You're Spider-Man's girlfriend, and you're friends with one of his deadliest foes, like his big villain, Mysterio. And say Mysterio goes back to the status quo, trying to be a villain after this. And she's going she's gonna to be caught in the middle, because she wouldn't want him arrested, because she that's her friend, but he'd be committing crimes. So this would create a wedge between her and and Peter Parker. So this is going to be a monumental thing down in the future that will affect Mysterio and Spider-Man's relationship as, you know, hero and villain, and also Mary Jane and Peter Parker's relationship. And at some point in time, I see Mysterio being in the Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man comic as, as, I guess, a friend because he doesn't want to go against Mary Jane with Spider-Man. So, like, th this is going to... On one hand, we got Doc Ock returning to form without any memories of being superior and he's in his old body, restored, healthy, whatever. He's going to be attacking. But now we kind of lose Mysterio. We're now, just like in the movie where it was a fake out that he was becoming a hero, he may actually be a hero in the Spider-Man comic because this movie takes off, it's going to be a huge, it maybe will make a billion dollars or two in this, you know, in the comic book world. And he wouldn't need to be a villain anymore because he has money. So maybe he would be a hero because if you're a villain and you're doing all this stuff to make money and now you're rich, what does he need to be a villain for? He's got everything he wanted. He's got his dreams come true. Uh, am I crazy about this? I mean, it, it's a different take you know, if a villain evolves and accomplishes their dreams, and then why would they need to be a villain anymore? So I am enjoying this immensely, but I, for one, don't want to lose the Spider-Man versus Mysterio aspect, unless, of course, somebody else becomes Mysterio. But I, I'm kind of, a li I'm, I'm enjoying the book and I'm liking it, but I'm kind of upset about the future, if that makes any sense. Because, again, I, I I don't want it to be, like, where all the villains become heroes. Like, you got Boomerang and this, and then it's like, well, what are you going to do then? Make new villains? I'm used to the old Spider-Man versus the Vulture, Spider-Man versus Mysterio. Like, I, 
you know, Spider-Man versus Doc Ock. When they took Doc Ock away, I was concerned. You know, now he's back. So that's my thoughts. Uh, this this Mary Jane Quinton Beck friendship is going to have ramifications in the future. And I think she's going to side with Quinton Beck and not Peter Parker. And that may affect their romance and their relationship also because Peter Parker is probably not going to be with Mary Jane if she's going to go against him with the villain. It's a new element to the whole Peter and Mary Jane aspect. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this long, lengthy review of The Amazing Mary Jane. Um, and it's interesting how they put her in a position to deal with all Spider-Man's villains without Spider-Man's villains know that that's the girlfriend. You know, that it, it, it's seeing her deal with upcoming, like, you know, the Vulture and the, the Rhino and all these different people... Uh, it's gonna, it's, it's weird, but I don't know how this book could continue beyond, let's say, 12 issues, but I guess we'll find out. All right, guys, have a great day. Take care. Bye for now.